How's it going, guys? Rolling from the Chicago Synth Exchange today. Today I brought one of my really close friends, Mike Borish, who has been experienced in fixing synths for over a decade. And today we're going to be comparing the Prophet 5 Rev 3.0 to the newer sequential Prophet 5 slash 10 Rev 4. So let's turn these guys on and let's see how close we can get. Thank you guys so much. So we got both of the synths loaded up with the original factory patches. So we're going to play patch from patch, do some comparisons, and then a little bit of improv I'm probably going to do my favorite patches that I enjoy doing on this guy, on this, and then playing them both simultaneously. So yeah, we're going to have a lot of fun with it. Yeah, this one's definitely got like a different filter curve than this one, I think. This one kind of sounds a little bit darker and yeah. sits back in the mix, huh? Yeah, and this one's a little bit brighter for sure. Definitely sounds more open to me. Yeah, they're starting to drift too. Like one of them's not staying in tune, or they're. in their own special way. I'm not going to hit the auto-tune because it takes too long to go on this one. So let's walk through another patch here. Yeah. That's like a clav knockoff. Yeah. like a slight difference in the envelope curves. Mm-hmm. Now you can hear that, I think it's like the, the, the A. So there's definitely like a... Well, that's because I set the vintage knob again that's going to like make let's, everything a little different. Let's turn it to four and let's see. I mean, they, like, I think they sound like the, <laughs> the, the four vintage yeah. is like they're, they're almost exactly the same now. Let's go back and play some other patches. I mean, it's like indistinguishable now. I'm going to open up some of these guys here. Please. Yeah, I mean this one. That's a that's a close call. We had the four vintage definitely. You know, I think is is the closest emulation to the original. As you know, strange as it sounds. Yeah, you just repaired this one too, right? So that's probably yeah. Why it I mean, I replaced yeah. roughly half of the components in it. The um, you know, other prone to failure. Um, So 
So here's the thing with me and the five. I think like 90% of the population that loves these synths are big into Tom York and love the track, everything in its right place, and a lot of stuff off of his solo album, Anima, which you, I know on um, Kid A, Prophet 5 was heavily used, and I like these, those sorts of tones. Also, I'm a huge fan of Tycho, who also uses this. And also, you could, I really think this thing does really great Boards of Canada sort of patches, too, so on the Rev 3.5. more mellow stuff. So now I'm going to do it on here because I do this all the time. Smash the envelopes exactly so we have it at six, six. No sustain. Release is going to be around seven. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. This mode as well, because you can route the mod wheel to more things than just the LFO. You have an initial amount on the LFO over here, which kind of serves as what the mod wheel does. So it kind of attenuates that. Instead of using this, I could free that up for something else. Sounds about right. Pulse width is going to be set to six on both because that's how I had it initially. And it's, oh yeah, a little more, so at around like three. Yeah, there's definitely, I, I think there's a slight difference in the, the, the envelope cutoff curve. Yeah. Between the two of them. Not that it's a bad thing either way. They're but just it's different just, beasts. Yeah, exactly. They're kind of like siblings. This is so like So this one's going to probably cut through the mix a little bit better, mm -hmm. which, I mean... Sometimes it's good. I mean, yeah, it's just a matter of you know preference, really. For sure. Yeah, I mean, I, I like them. I like them both. Just curious how the. Yeah. And you can almost hear the zipper effect in this yeah. one. What causes the zipper effect? There's only 127 uh, points in the whole cutoff range. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when you jump from one step to another, sometimes it's not linear. And then... Uh. You know, you can you can have an issue there, or I mean, you're, you're you're changing values as opposed to just like a smooth, you know, transition. So you're changing values from some, you know, something like you know, 1.21 volts to 1.35 volts instead of just you know gradually progressing there. Interesting. If this had infinite resolution, there wouldn't be any zipper effect. That's just a, a, like a an artifact of the the the, the digital process, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're both interesting and special in their own way. This one has way more features. I mean, velocity, aftertouch, MIDI. Actually, they just released a software editor for it. Yeah. Um, yeah, and um, you have. Th we just compared it to the Rev Three, but there's a Rev One and the Rev Two in the world. Really good luck trying to find a Rev One that works, but to compare it to. But and there's only I think yeah. a couple hundred of them. 
and uh -huh. they're almost priceless. I'm imagining. Well, they're like a nerd collector's piece. I mean, there's the you real know, maintenance associated with them. There's finding a decent tech. There's part sourcing issues you got to worry about with the the ones and the twos. Um, it's it's like a, a a niche community, I guess, is the best way to put it. Well, the one that has a real niche community, actually, probably no community at all, because they I think they only made like eight or ten of them. Someone fact checked me is actually the original Profit Tens which they made around the same time as the Rev 1, and it was Dave Smith's initial idea when he released the synth to release a five voice variant and a 10 voice variant that was supposed to be the flagship. And so the original Prophet 10 was actually this concept. Mike, thank you so much for coming in. It's always a pleasure chatting. I feel like I've become smarter every time I talk to you regarding this type of stuff. Um, yeah, well, I try to answer you know, most people's questions. I mean, I'm not like perfect. I mean. There's just so many synths out there and so many things to know, you know, you, know, you can never know everything, I guess. No, for sure, but you do know a lot. I always learn so much. Um, and if you guys have anything vintage that you guys need for repair, Mike is the best at it. Yeah, ForceElectronics.com. Especially his um, 106 chips are absolutely phenomenal. He replaced mine and it sounds even better than they did back in 1984.